2016 shall also address emerging issues which have serious implications for university governance and the survival of the country as one indivisible nation. Our strike action and unveiling of the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, UTAS. Comrades and compatriots, each time we explained the basis for rejecting IPs, we had always promised that ASU will produce a robust software solution that will be sensitive to the uniqueness of the university system in addressing personnel information and payroll system, among other things. Following our engagements with the federal government over the issues that eventually led to the declaration of the ongoing strike action on 17th March 2020, government declared that, I quote, it accepts in principle the University Transparency and Accountability Solution, UTAS, which is being developed by ASU and its researchers for the financial administration of the university's FG's staff monthly payroll and accounting processes, end of quotation. In addition, the federal government pledged that, I quote again, when fully developed, UTAS will be subjected to various integrity tests in order to verify its efficacy to see whether this final product will pass the necessary technical attribute test as specified by NITDA. End of quotation. On our part, ASU had given a time frame of 18 months to government to develop tests and deploy UTAS. In keeping with this promise, ASU is pleased to announce that UTAS is now ready for the integrity test required, by, required of it by government. Indeed, the software was unveiled by way of demonstration to the minister and senior management staff of the Ministry of Education including the Executive Secretary of the National Universities Commission, NUC, yesterday, 17th August, 2020. We must, however, emphasize that UTAS is far more than just an alternative to IPs, which does not respect the nature, structure, and character of the Nigerian university system. It was ill-advised ab initio to have deployed IPPIS in the universities. All the distortions and disruptions being reported within the university payrolls of federal universities in the last six months or so, even by those who initially welcomed IPs with open arms, were predicted by ASU. Unlike IPs, however, UTAS is a web-based enterprise resource planning application deployed for the overall management of university resources in an efficient, transparent, and accountable manner. It is developed to run on the concept of software as a service in which universities maintain subdomains as tenants, users identified and authenticated for the purpose of getting access to any of the aspects of the platforms such as a user is appropriately authorized. Among other things, UTAS recognizes all agreements entered into between the government and university-based trade unions, ensures simultaneous payment of employee salaries and third-party deductions, for example, tax, pension, union dues, cooperatives, bank loans, and so on. Seamlessly, allows for centralized monitoring of staff and staff emoluments across universities 
by the National Universities Commission, NUC, allows university to adopt to the to adapt to the fluidity in nature, type, and period of recruitment of staff and facilitates storage and automated retrieval of personnel records for effective monitoring. UTAS is beneficial to the university system and Nigeria because it is a locally developed software in line with the local, local content policy of the federal government. It guarantees automation of staff and salary ad administration. It allows tracking of staff career progression. It exhibits ease of auditing process. It permits data mining for intelligent analysis, and it guarantees national security and sovereignty. Development of UTAS is a concrete estimation, test, it is a concrete attestation to the capacity of Nigerian scholars and researchers to respond to our developmental challenges when tasked to provide solutions. It is our sincere hope that government will not renege on its promise because the benefits of UTAS to the university system, both public and private, cannot be found in any other software in Nigeria today. Now that the union is close to meeting government's demand on alternative IPs, alternative to IPs, it is our sincere hope that the substantive issues in the ongoing strike action will be given the desired attention. Purported removal of uni like vice chancellor. Compatriots of the press, the national leadership of ASU received the news of the purported removal of the vice chancellor of the University of Lagos, Unilag, by the governing council chaired by Dr. Wale Babalaki, SAN, with absolute shock and total disappointment. We are shocked not because we regard Professor Oluwato Inti Ogundipe as a saint, but for the fact that all available evidence indicates that he was not taken through the due process. In spite of Dr. Babalakin's spirited efforts to defend the indefensible, it is now clear to all and sundry that there is more to the story coming from the senior member of the bar. In his media appearances, Dr. Wale Babalaki has been clinging tenaciously, tenaciously to his knowledge of the law. Yet, other senior advocates like him, including professors from the Faculty of Law in Unilag, where he was trained, I've told him in clear terms that he goofed because the due process as expressly required by the University Miscellaneous Provisions Amendment Act 2003 was not followed in removing Professor Gundikwe as Vice Chancellor. Even some members of the Unilag's Governing Council have reported that Dr. Babalaki was economical with the truth in his rendering of what transpired at the council meeting of Wednesday, 12th August 2020. Rather than addressing the substance of non-compliance with due process, Dr. Babalaki has been dismissing anyone that rejected his council's ill-advised decision. He said the Alumni Association did not care to listen to his own side of the story before issuing a release that called for a return to status quo ante, whereas the chairman of the Alumni Association, Dr. John Momo, is a member of the Governing Council and was privy to the trajectory of the Unilag saga. In the same way, he rejected the verdict of the alumni. Dr. Babalaki also claimed, claimed that the committee of vice chancellors was just a phone call away from him when the committee accused Babalaki's council of not respecting due process. For the avoidance of doubt, Dr. Wale Babalaki should be reminded 
that the knowledge of procedures and processes for appointment and removal of vice chancellor, vice chancellors is not the exclusive preserve of legal luminaries because the sources are out there in the public space. Curiously, he has been quoting a strange law, the University Miscellaneous Provisions Amendment Act of 2009, in quotes, which is not known to any other stakeholder as the basis of his council's decision. It is public knowledge that ASU has consistently been at the forefront of the struggle for university autonomy in Nigeria. As we speak, university autonomy and academic freedom is one of the four key issues listed for the negotiation in the 2009 FGN ASU agreement, which Dr. Wale Babalaki led team as unduly dragged for three and a half years without any concrete results. What we know as the autonomy law in Nigeria today is the university's miscellaneous provisions amendment act 2003, which was officially gazetted on 12th January 2007 and was further amended in 2012. The principal act itself is the university's Miscellaneous Provisions Act number 11 of 1993. This act and subsequent amendments to it applies to all federal universities in the country. Many state universities have equally domesticated the 2003 act in, the, in their university laws. However, as an eminent professor of law puts it, I quote, the amendment of 2003 and 2012 not yet formally incorporated are to be read into the enabling laws under the principle of incorporation by reference. End of quotation. Dr. Wale Babalaki appears to have been quoting section 38 of the principal act as amended, which states, I quote, the vice chancellor may be removed from office by the governing council on grounds of misconduct or inability to discharge the functions of his office as a result of infirmity of the body or mind at the initiative of the council, senate, or the congregation after due process. However, it has been evasive on two interrelated questions the Senate participate in the process as required by the law, and two, was due process followed. ASU fully supports the Unilag Senate, Senate's rejection of the Dr. Wale Babalaki-led governing council's ill-informed decision to remove the vice chancellor. We call on Mr. President as visitor to University of Lagos to immediately constitute a special visitation panel to look into the immediate and remote causes of the offense that led to the purported removal of Professor Lua Toyinti Ogundipe as Vice Chancellor of Unilag with a view to bringing all found culpable to book. Governance issues in Nigerian universities. In recent times, ASU had had reasons to express serious concerns over governance issues in many Nigerian universities. Some vice chancellors were deceiving and defrauding unsuspecting students and parents by pretending to keep the session running during the nationwide lockdown in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic in universities bereft of the required ICT infrastructure. We know of universities where students were mandatorily, mandatorily made to pay for matriculation gowns in order to participate in online matriculation and graduation ceremonies. There were also reports that fraudulent online examinations were and are still being conducted in some universities involving surrogate examiners such as parents 
and relations of candidates as supervisors. And it is shocking to note that some of these malfeasances against academic standard and university ethos were perpetrated by private as well as public universities, including federally owned ones. We also note with regret that first chancellors in some universities have been threatening and victimizing our members for refusing to participate in activities likely to compromise university procedures and practices during the ongoing strike action and the nationwide lockdown. In collaboration with the IPPIS office, with the IPPIS officials, illegal recruitment of staff without following due process have been going on for months in many federal universities. In both federal and state universities, some vice chancellors have insisted on carrying out promotion exercises which have not been done for upward five years just to spite our union and its loyal members. We note that persecution of ASU is indeed heart-wrenching heart -wrenching because gains from the union's struggles have always brought added value to the universities and made the discharge of their responsibilities much easier. We mean responsibilities of the vice chancellors. With the winding down of COVID-19 lockdown, ASU calls on the National Universities Commission as the regulator of the universities to take immediate steps to investigate all fraudulent practices committed by overseas vice chancellors who have compromised and are still compromising academic standards and subverting university ethos in the name of the so-called IGR. And of course, the, the so-called new normal. Why we salute the courage and, and resoluteness of many vice chancellors who have stood their ground in preserving whatever is left of the quality of Nigeria's university education, our union will not hesitate to expose those who are prepared to sacrifice the system in the name of IGR. Meanwhile, ASU is dissatisfied with some of the recently constituted governing councils. Our union has had cause to do strong petitions against some decisions of the old councils where some or all members were returned. Examples are Federal University of Yokiti and Federal University Lokoja, where our members have been persecuted for no just cause in the last couple of years. It is our considered view that all external members of a governing council with substantiated evidence of incompetence and corruption should be disbanded as stipulated by law. Distinguished compatriots, it is highly embarrassing that three out of 12 universities established under President Goodluck Jonathan have been operating close to 10 years without their respective establishment acts. We call on the federal government to take urgent and necessary steps to remedy the situation. Also, the governing council of the University of Patakot should be reconstituted immediately in order to set the necessary machinery in motion. In order to set the necessary machinery in motion for the appointment of a substantive vice chancellor for the university. In the same vein, the new governing council of the Federal University, Dusima, should put a stop to the proliferation of acting vice chancellors by appointing a substantive VC so as to restore administrative normalcy in the new university. State of the nation. Comrades and compatriots, 
It amounts to stating the obvious, to say the ship of our nation has drifted to a frightening precipice. We seem to be losing grip in virtually all key areas of our national life, such as education, health, economy, and security. The parallel state of the economy has now been worsened by unanticipated COVID-19 lockdown, leading to, leading to another inescapable, inescapable bout of recession. Recent data from the National Bureau of Statistics indicates that the rates of crime and criminality have not only increased in the last one year, but are likely to further rise with the increasing rates of unemployment and underemployment. For instance, Nigeria's unemployment rate jumped from 23.1% in 2018 to 27.1% 27 by the second quarter of 2020, indicating that as many as 21.7 million Nigerians are unemployed. The unwarranted scobos over who superintends over who superintends the employment of some 774,000 temporary workers between the executive and legislature have also not done much to rekindle hope in the ordinary and helpless Nigerians. This cannot be otherwise with the unimaginable level of looting and the fashion of our patrimony by elected and appointed government officials. Little wonder that the security challenge has escalated beyond apprehension of state authorities. From northeast through the middle belt to southwest, and from northwest to southeast and south-south, the stories have been the same tales of woes. Beside the hydra-headed attack of Boko Haram, an armed banditry traditionally associated with the North, reports of his men farmers conflicts, inter- and intra-community warfare, and ethnic militia and terrorist activities in, more, in almost every part of the country have made nonsense of Nigeria's security architecture. Quoting a published report, the Premium Times of 13 February reported that as many as 3,188 people lost their lives between January and December 2019 to violent incidents, which include gang wars, clashes, extrajudicial killings, resource crisis, kidnapping, and Boko Haram slash ISW AP attacks. The source further stated that 2,707 out of the number of deaths were those of civilians, while 481 belonged to security agents. The duty to protect citizens is the basis for legitimacy of any state or government. The fundamental objective of any state is to ensure security of lives and property for all people living within its territory. We call on the Nigerian government to live to its responsibility as captured in Chapter 2, Section 14 B of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which states that the security and welfare of the people shall be the primary purpose of government. A situation where regional authorities and groups have to resort to self-help is symptomatic of a failing state, and it may be a recipe to anarchy. It may be a recipe to anarchy. Also, as a union of intellectuals, finds it unacceptable that the presidential task force would discuss issues related to prevention, control, and possible cure of COVID-19 in Nigeria 
without reference to universities and university-based scholars. It is no longer news that ASU members across the country were actively involved in the production and distribution of hand sanitizers, radio, stroke TV jingles, handbills, and posters, hand washing buckets, and other items supportive of government's efforts to prevent and control the spread of coronavirus in Nigeria. At the same time, our medical and paramedical professionals were and are still involved in frontline activities as members of COVID-19 state task forces and volunteers in the isolation centers and clinics where their services were and are still critically required in moments like this. Deploying ASU members for medical and social emergencies at a time the Nigerian government was and is withholding salaries of our colleagues in federal universities over discredited IPs is a decision born out of our sense of history. <clears throat> history teaches us that in a time of extraordinary adversity, extraordinary demands are made on the will of humankind both in relation to our sheer courage and determination to survive, as in terms of wisdom and ingenuity, which we must bring to bear on the existential task of, some, of surmounting the adversity that we are confronted with. The COVID-19 pandemic is one such moment of supreme adversity in the career in the career of humankind. And we, as a union, are proud of our heritage of demonstrating courage and resourcefulness in a moment like this. As of today, we are in receipt of letters of appreciation from more than 10 state governors, which attest to the positive roles our intervention meant in the COVID-19 prevention and control efforts. However, we view the federal government's failure to acknowledge the intellectual and research community in the national discourse on COVID-19 as a continuation of the trajectories which brought our universities to their knees and deprived them of capacity to respond to national challenges. We call on the federal government as well as state governments to reverse these trends for Nigeria to witness the new development. Conclusion. We cannot end this address without a brief response to numerous inquiries on the position of ASU on reopening of universities. As we have continually stated in recent weeks, our demands in the ongoing strike action predated COVID-19 pandemic or even the resurgence of government's insistence on forceful migration of lecturers to the IPPIS platform. As we speak, five more salaries of our members at the University of Maiduguri Unimed and Michael Kwara University of Agriculture, Umudike, are still withheld by the Accountant General of the Federation on account of non-registration on IPs. Thousands of other academics across the universities are suffering the same fate. So, why we cancel that government at both federal and state levels must meet the task force specified guidelines for the opening of educational institutions, we insist that all the areas of the, of the retail salaries of our members in federal and state universities must be paid immediately to pave way for further discussion on the outstanding issues in the Memorandum of Action of 7th February 2019. I thank you all for listening. Services that the network providers are providing. And I think, again, you can say that the students of private universities maybe can afford to buy smartphones that will enable them to have access. In public universities, 
We have students that are from very poor backgrounds that they cannot. In fact, what we are doing currently is to organize a response to help the students remain in the university when the university is in session. How do you expect such students to be able to cope? Now, there is another factor that is also worth noting, assessment. How do you do assessment online? I had some people saying they can ask the parents, the parents to supervise their children while they are doing the assessment and then they can upload it so that the university will now look at it and see that yes. <laughs> the parents that go out to pay in these so-called magic centers for their wards and children to get good, good grades that will enable them to come to the university and over the years, force us to introduce this post ME to be able to assure ourselves that these this grades that these students or candidates are brandishing are genuine. Is it these parents that you are expecting to supervise their children to do assessment and then post it online? I think we need to be very serious about issues in this country. Education is not something you joke about. And that is the reason why over the years you see our union pushing government to pay adequate attention to education by funding our public universities adequately. Unless and until and unless we do that, we will continue to be chasing shadows. Many of us here have the capacity to conduct research and address very serious issues affecting this country. But because there is the art in research facilities, cutting edge research facilities in our universities, we are nowhere. Recently, Russia is informing the world that they have been able to come up with vaccines that will address the COVID-19 pandemic. And other countries are challenging Russia to make it available so that they can be able to test and confirm that it We are not moving in that direction in this country. I'm sure all of you will be happy if we announce to the world that one of the universities in this country had been able to come up with a vaccine that will address. And then all these issues about population control, these are the gates. If we have one broad solution to our problem, would some people be coming from somewhere to detect us and also manipulate these solutions in their favor? They will not. So I think, ladies and gentlemen, we are partners in progress with you on this. We want to ensure that our government lays priorities on education so that Nigerian children who once they have an opportunity to get outside this country, they excel, should have the opportunity within their country to also excel. Thank you very much. Yes, let me do. They subsidized the facility and access to internet. In fact, some of our friends in South Africa told us that we as students could not afford laptops. They were given laptops. And they were given like 40 g per month. I think if we could have that kind of, that, that level of subsidy, subsidy for education in Nigeria, we will, not, we will not object. IPP has told you that it's a class issue. When you talk about private university, it's a class issue. It was mentioned in this case, which I also mentioned here. People said they were doing online teaching, and they said they have set exams, parents should supervise. It's there, there's a memo. You could have read it online too. So you see that kind of corruption going on there. And that is why we have called for NUC to come into it and investigate the bastardization of education in the name of online teaching. Do we have the infrastructures?